Hello YouTube, it's Dorian here. Uh, one of my viewers sent me a message, Wasteman, um, mentioning GNOME. It's new to him, he's just trying it out, and he thought, you know what, maybe do a walkthrough, it would be awesome. And I thought, you know what, I've never actually done a walkthrough of GNOME because it's, it's my desktop environment, I'm just so used to using it. I've done videos on customizing it, but I've never actually done a walkthrough of how you use it um, what's different about it and different ways that you can use extensions and add-ons to be more productive and keyboard shortcuts and whatnot. So I thought, you know what, why not? Let's do it. There's a few people on my channel who are just trying GNOME now, so why not? Let's, let's go over it. So on your screen now, this is GNOME. This is also GNOME, and I say that because I really don't care what you call it. People say GNOME, people say GNOME. It is what it is. I know what you mean. No sense, you know, getting all upset over it. Anyways, so your desktop is a picture, whatever picture you choose. That is it. There are no icons on the desktop. I will get to that later. At the top, you've got a single bar depending on the distro and theme that you have it'll be slightly lighter gray it'll be black doesn't matter theming can always be changed i basically reverted my desktop to look as basic as it can but i kept my themes so if yours looks slightly different just download some themes and uh, make it look like however you want so starting in the right corner here we have a system tray over here, when you click that, you're gonna have your volume, your microphone volume, your display brightness, your Wi-Fi, your Bluetooth, your battery with power settings, your user where you can log out, account settings. Then you have a settings window and you have the shutdown menu. I'm not gonna do that, click on that because it makes OBS complain that I'm trying to shut it down while it's still recording. Anyways, so this brings up the settings window, which is here. Now, if you have an older version before 3.26 or 0.8, I don't remember, uh, it'll look different. It's gonna have a bunch of icons instead of this little nice sidebar here that scrolls, but it's gonna be pretty much the same. Your settings are pretty much like any other operating system settings. Um, not really going to go through every single one backgrounds, notifications. I'll get to that later. Uh, your search, I'll get to that later. There's a whole bunch of stuff here that I will get to later. So I'm just going to close this and continue talking about the system tray. If you have applications where, um, something's going to run in the system tray, such as steam or even OBS, you can enable system tray. Those icons are also going to appear here. Now moving on to the middle, we've got the day and the time. If you click on that, you've got a handy little calendar here and you also have a notification area. When you get a notification, it'll just pop up here on your screen. You can click to close it. And if you have several, they're going to start piling up in here so you can see your previous ones. Your calendar here, you can add word, world clocks. You can add weather. I haven't done that, but you can. And if you click on future dates, you can see if you have your system linked to a calendar, you can see any events that are on that day. And it'll also be a, a highlight on that date. And same thing here on this date, you'll have things, if you have events going on today, they'll be listed in here as well, along with the notifications. So that's the middle, over to the side here. This normally isn't here, this is OBS. This is whatever application is open, the menu that belongs to it. Then you have activities. So activities is the overview. And you can also activate the activities overview with the Windows key. Or if you're on a Mac or whatever, it's the super key, the command key, whatever you wanna call it. For the purposes of this video, I'm going to call it the Windows key. So the Windows key will bring up your overview. Now, the overview right now looks pretty bare. 
you've got a search box at the top and you've got a panel on the side here which is called the dash and on the right you've got well these I'll get to later these are desktop virtual desktops so we'll get to that later the dash here is your favorite applications so your favorite applications are essentially pinned here and when you first install a gnome distro you'll have a few basic things like firefox and the file manager and a text editor and whatever different distros have different things and at the very bottom here you'll have a grid and it says show applications so if you click grid it's going to bring up your applications at the bottom there's two options it might look different on yours depending on the theming but it'll be frequent or all so frequent is obviously the applications you use frequently and all shows you everything so if you use the wheel or you use the up and down arrow on your keyboard you can scroll through all your different applications if you want to add something to your dash as a favorite you would just right click it and say add to favorite and boom there it is it just popped up in the bottom and you can also right click and remove from favorites so that's pretty easy there's uh not much to talk about there there's your little dots here just show what page you're on show, showing that there's three pages of applications and you can also get directly to that menu by hitting holding the windows key and pressing a it'll bring it up immediately instead of having to go windows key and then click the grid so if you know the application that you want to open it's almost faster sometimes to just type it so you hit the windows key and i want firefox fi enter boom firefox opens so the search you don't have to click on it just start typing now if you look again now if i type fi there is anything that starts with fi or has fi in it file or also in the description so some things might show up that are a little odd because in the description of the application it has fi for some reason so firefox is showing up before files even though files alphabetically should be the first thing well if we go and look at our applications and we go to frequent firefox is used more than files this is in order of what you use the most often so what i use the most often is firefox followed by files followed by kden live and so on and so on and so on one and another example i can give you here is oracle virtual box and obs obs alphabetically is before oracle but if i hit o Oracle comes up first because it's first in this list of frequently used applications. So as you're using it, it's going to automatically order this list and figure out what you use the most. So it's handy because you learn what's in that list, right? So I know that if I want files, I have to type FIL. And if I just want Firefox, just FI. And if I want um, get it, it's there, Genie, Geary, whatever I want to use. So super easy to figure out what you want to open just by typing. I can go like this, so I can go Windows key WR because I want to open LibreOffice Writer. So Windows key WR, enter, and boom, it's there. I want GIMP, Windows key GIM, enter. Boom, it's there. If I type just G, it's going to give me G parted because I use that more often. So that's a little trick with search box and the frequently used applications. The more you use your computer and the more applications you use, the more GNOME is going to figure out what you use more often and it'll make sure to put that first in the search. However, you have all your favorites here. So, you don't really have to do that. You can just hit the Windows key and click your favorites. Now, there's no taskbar, as you could see. So if I open uh, the file manager and Firefox and writer and 
get it and what else? I don't even know. Okay, I've got a few things open. So switching back and forth, you have to hit the Windows key and access this. This is the mentality of using a taskbar, right? But you see when I hit the Windows key, not only did it bring up this, but now that I have things open, it's showing me what is open. It zoomed out all my open applications. So I hit Windows again, I can go back and forth. So for switching, I can hit Windows key and then click on what I want or Windows key and then use the mouse or not the mouse, the uh, keyboard arrows to cycle through and then hit enter for what I want. Now, of course, there's also alt tab. You can alt tab as well and hitting down shows you a preview of what's, what that window is. So there's a few different ways of switching applications. What we can also do is go to the overview. Uh, let's say Kaden Live, I'm editing a video. So I want to put this video editor in a separate desktop so that I can click on this and that's all that's running here. See if I minimize it, there's nothing else running. So go here, go over here, go here. Now I can do this with as many desktops as I want. I can move Firefox into this desktop and I'm gonna put Writer in this desktop. So you can do this. I personally don't use virtual desktops. Um, and you can also page up and page down to scroll between virtual desktops. I don't do that. Uh, I guess I just don't feel the need to have to have a completely separate workspace. I'll use two monitors so I can work on one monitor with something and have something else on the other monitor. But the virtual desktop things personally for me is not something that I've ever found useful, but a lot of people do find it useful. So that's one bonus. Taskbars, virtual desktops, that's all taken care of. But now what if you want to have this visible all the time? Well, now we're getting into extensions and I'll put a card, a link up here in the video on extensions, but there are a lot of extensions that you can install and use with GNOME tweak tools. If I open up Firefox and I go to Home Shell extensions, this is where you're going to search for and install whatever extensions you want to use. Um, it's all in the video that I linked earlier and I'm not going to go over it again, but there's tons of things to completely change how GNOME behaves. One thing here, if you don't want the minimize button, which I usually don't in windows, there are title bar actions. So double click is maximize middle click normally is set to none. I changed it to minimize. So minimize, and I can actually get rid of the minimize button on the title bar because I don't need it. If I want to minimize a window, I can just middle click and it goes away. So easy as that, right? Um, and then the maximize button as well. You could turn it on so that you can maximize, but really you don't need that either because with GNOME, you can double click, that's fine, or drag to the top and let go and then drag it down. You can also drag side to side. Most, um, most distros and windows do this, but you can also hold the windows key and you can go left, right, up, down, right, left, down, up, down, and it'll move it however way you want, just using keyboard shortcuts. So there's a lot of keyboard shortcut shortcuts that you can do to make things happen. Now, extensions, I wasn't done with that. Extensions, some handy ones. Wasteman was talking about widgets and whatnot. GNOME doesn't use widgets. GNOME uses extensions, sort of similar, but not as fancy. KDE has some very useful widgets. 
a lot of them are bling or you know like a toy or gadgets like you have like a bouncing ball or some googly eyes looking at you you know it's i don't know why you would want that but uh <laughs> extensions i find are i don't mean to insult kde because i really like kde extensions are more useful things as opposed to the the widgets of kde which are more often just some type of toy or something but I digress. I, I do use the odd widget, but I find most of them are, are are pointless. But anyways, so let's go through some extensions here and things that can make um, make it a little handier. So widgets, like uh, he was asking, one super handy one is the places status indicator. So the status indicators up here. If I turn this on, now you see here places it turns that on so places brings up your home documents downloads and your your different partitions on your system your different shortcuts or browse the network and it gets this information from nautilus which is files gnome files so all this stuff that's here will basically show up here including browse the network so that's pretty handy to have and that's something that I used to use all the time and just got into a habit because, well, I'll get that. I'll, I'll get into that later why I don't use it anymore. All right. So something else that's really handy is removable drive menu. So again, in files, when you have a USB stick in like this one, I have a USB stick in my laptop, you hit the eject to unmount it. Right. But if you don't have that open, if you enable removable drive menu, now you get this little button up here. So see, gone there. Yeah. And this will list everything that is mounted and, and inserted. So this is the USB stick and this is two other partitions on my hard drive that are currently mounted. So I can unmount them from here. So it's nice because these things kind of add to the bar, but don't really clutter too much. You can actually make this a complete mess and add a ton of stuff if you want, but the whole point of GNOME is that it's out of your way, right? So if I'm writing in Writer, it's very minimal things going on, minimal disruptions, not a lot of stuff going on, and it's meant to blend into the background and, you know, not be in your face type thing, I suppose. There is that. What else do I have? I have a few things installed, uh, like status area, horizontal spacer. If I turn that off, you can see how there's a big gap here now. So this status area, horizontal spacing fixes that and makes it a little tighter. And it has settings that you can adjust the padding. So that's something that makes it look a little nicer. User themes is something you should turn on if you want to theme your shell. Uh, in appearance, shell here. In order to be able to change this theme, you have to have this user themes extension enabled. Uh, workspace indicator, there's a whole bunch of stuff here that I have that I don't really use. Um, sensors, removable drive menu is on. Open weather is one that you can turn on and it'll show the the weather of where you are right now and you have to set it you have to go into the settings and enter in your location and then it'll show you a little forecast but um it's not something that i really use i did use it at one point and i stopped using it uh one thing that i use all the time because i have an nvidia gpu and it's an optimus so it turns on and off as well which is what i want to see I turn this on it is the optimus temperature sensor if you have an nvidia card it'll just show you the temperature of your gpu here uh, other things launch new instances manjaro linux update indicator yeah i'll turn that on because that shows me if i have updates or not which i do chromium uh case status notifier item slash app indicator support so this is something that you need to have certain icons from older 
applications show up here. Otherwise, they show up in the bottom left corner here, and it's really weird. So this extension basically moves those items up to here. Dropbox is one of them. I don't know if they changed it, but Dropbox would show up down here in this little tab that would slide out. So this extension moves those icons up there. Um, and app folder management extensions. This one is extremely handy. This one enables you to, if I can do this, enables you to create folders and group things. So I have disks. So I put everything in disks. I have utilities. All this junk that I don't want in my menu is here. So that extension, what that does is it lets me, let me see, what do I not want? Um, it's gotta be something I can get rid of just because, okay, passwords and keys. So that belongs in utilities. So I'm gonna right click it, add to utilities. So this little add to part is the extension that I was just talking about. So add to utilities and it moves it into utilities out of the way. And it is right there. So that cleans it up so you're not seeing a bunch of stuff that you don't wanna see. And you can group things and whatnot. So that's definitely uh, an extension that you want that's very, very handy. Um, so dash to dock, this is one that I used for a very, very long time. So it basically turns your dock into, or your dash into a dock. If you like having a taskbar or something so that you can switch between applications, then this is definitely something that you want. And it even has indicators for if you open multiple uh, if you can zoom in here, if you open multiple windows, now there's two dots, now there's three dots, and then you can scroll on it to change. So really, really cool. And if you like having something always here that you can always see what's open, you can always switch, then that's an extension that you want to use. If I click on the gear icon, there's a lot of different options. It doesn't have to take up the entire screen and it can actually also hide if you want it to. So it'll only pop up when you go to the edge of the screen like that. So I'll turn that off again and extend. There's tons of options in here. I shrunk it down, the launchers I changed, the behavior I changed, the appearance I changed it all, right? So um, customize it to be however you want it and then it's always there. You can have an auto hide, do whatever you want. And actually you can even move it to the other side if you want, or you can have it on the top or on the bottom, right? So there's that. And I've had, I had my desktop like this for the longest time. I forgot to zoom out. Awesome. <laughs> so yeah, uh, like I was saying, you can move it to the right, you can move it to the top, you can do whatever. So I had changed and customized this heavily and I had it like this for ever until not too long ago when I tried KDE and I really got used to having the bar on the bottom. It was different. It was nice. It was taking less room because here you have a bar on the top and on the side. So if you turn that off, there is dash to panel which pushes everything down and puts it all together into one nice bar, everything all together. Um, the only thing is places here. Yeah, don't need that anymore. So I'm gonna get rid of that. The reason why I got rid of places, by the way, was, here, let me just bring it back. It was cool because I could go here and I could go downloads. So it was almost like little shortcut, right? But if you think about it, I was going, okay, one click, two clicks. Well, I can also go one click, two clicks, right? Like there was no, I wasn't saving any time or anything. So once I actually realized that I was like, yeah, I don't need that anymore. So I got rid of that. So now I'm using it as a panel and I've 
I've talked about this in another recent video, uh, how to make your gnome look like KDE. There's not much more to go over. I mean, it is a, it's a desktop environment. It doesn't have all the fancy stuff that KDE does. Like there's a million ways where when a window closes, it can fly off the screen or it can break into a million pieces or you can make your windows wobble. There's none of that stuff in GNOME, but it is very efficient. It's very clean. It's easy to work with. Very handy. Even if you have the dash to dock or dash to panel, everything works the same when you hit the Windows button. You still have your virtual desktops here and you can switch and you can move it if you so choose. I don't know <clears throat> personally anyone who uses virtual desktops for a full window managed desktop like GNOME or KDE or XFCE, things like uh, i3 and awesome, like all those things. Or if you're using open box with polybar, I can see that they're like, they're different desktops, but really all you're really doing is switching from when one window to the other, and each window is taking up the entire screen or you've set, you know, you've set, you've set it so that one is like this, one is like this. And then you're like, okay, that's my desktop. Now I'm going to make another desktop, something different. So. I don't know. I don't see the need for that. It's the same. It's the same as, you know, seeing those screenshots of people who have i3 and it has a million terminals open and it's all doing different things. But really, when you look at it, one is just showing the RAM usage. One is showing like some random directory. One has volume controls. Like, I don't, I, that's not for me. <laughs> it's, it's, you're not really doing anything. It just looks like you're doing stuff. But anyways, lastly, the desktop itself, icons, shortcuts on the desktop. That was actually one of the main questions and I'm glad I didn't forget. Can you put files and folders and shortcuts on the desktop? Yes and no. In GNOME prior to 3.28 with tweak tools, you could enable desktop icons so that you could have shortcuts and files and folders and whatever like you would have on Windows or you can have in KDE and other desktop environments. But in 3.28, they made the decision to kill that permanently and now you can no longer do it. I'm sure there may be some way you can hack it in a very unpretty way and unstable way to have shortcuts on your desktop, but is it really worth it? That's the thing. I mean, if you look here, I have what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, like 15 or 16 shortcuts here of all my commonly used applications. And that's more than enough. It's only taking half the panel. I could fill it all the way to here if I wanted to. But like I said, I can just type whatever I want and it's there as well, but I already have get it in my tray here. So, or in my panel. So really there's no need to, um, to have stuff on your desktop for your documents, maybe, but uh, have you seen some people's desktops, folders and folders and random files all over the place? To me, I'm not a minimalist, but to me, I think, this looks so much better. And when I loaded KDE, I installed, I installed something in play on Linux and it put a shortcut on my desktop. And it was this big, huge shortcut that just popped up in the corner. And I was, I was like, what is that? Like I didn't want it on my desktop and I actually removed it. So <laughs> you kind of get used to this nice, clean desktop. Whatever is on the desktop is what I'm working on. And that's why I like it. That's why it's GNOME. I hope that answers your question. I hope that was a, a good enough walkthrough. And quickly going through the control panel and a quick look at the settings, um, productivity wise and whatnot. This isn't really on topic, I suppose. So I'm gonna go through it pretty quick. Your Bluetooth settings, your backgrounds for your desktop, your lock screen, 
notifications. You can turn them on and off. The little pop-up that shows up here. Search where you want to search for because this is actually one thing that I should mention. If you have contacts linked and whatnot through online accounts, which I will get to, um, you can search for them in here. Just like how there's clocks. So if I say New York, you can see what time it is in New York according to the clocks application. So there's other cool things that you can add in here as well, like Wikipedia and look up, you know, Wikipedia things and whatnot. But if you want to turn these off, you can do that too. Uh, online accounts, this is not something I would use. This is totally up to you. Productivity wise, this isn't going to help. I don't want anything connecting to my desktop, to my OS. If I want mail, it's in my mail client. Anything else, I use Firefox. I don't need anything connecting to my system, but that's just me. You can feel free to do it if you want. And then if you have any calendars, then your events will show up here, which is what I was talking about earlier. Sound settings. Uh, power settings, all pretty uh, standard stuff. Network devices. Devices might be a little handy. You can see I have my two screens set up here. You can set the orientation, the resolution, and you can turn night light on and off. Details. Details just show you the version 3.28.2. Set your date and time, your users, and set your default applications to do different things. And that is the settings. So that's just a quick walkthrough of how I do things and how I work in GNOME. You know, hopefully if you've never used it before, this showed you a few things that you can pretty much learn on your own. The GNOME, the GNOME tweak tools, the ones that I use, I find are a good combination. Uh, little tricks like removing the minimize bar so you can just middle click and whatnot. All things to make things, you know, quicker for you in the end. I'm not saying that GNOME is 100% better than any other distro. I also very much like KDE. I'm just saying that it's something that I've personally liked enough to use exclusively for 10 years. And I used it before that as well. I had a little KDE around version 3, 3.5. Uh, had a little KDE moment, a little era where I had switched from GNOME to KDE, and then I came back. But, and now I may be going back to KDE, so we'll see. I haven't decided yet. Well, I would like to thank my patrons over on Patreon, Carlos, Arknos, Carl, George, Matt, Kit, Says, and Reagan. Thank you guys so much for contributing to my channel. You make this channel possible. If you'd like to contribute, head on over to patreon.com slash dorian.slash. Till next time, guys, bash on.